Hey YouTube, Kent here from Think Trade Profit. Today I want to share with you what I think is one of the best indicators for uh, trend trade entries. Uh, helping you stick with them, not get shaken out too early, and know that you're on the right side of, of kind of the direction for the day. Wouldn't it be great to to know what was going on underneath all of that price action that you see on the screen? I mean, in, in the moment you see that your stock is going up or your instrument's going up, but how do you know it's going to continue? So one of my favorite indicators for staying with trend trades and getting in the right time with trend trades is the tick indices or the ticks. So there's a New York Stock Exchange tick index. There's actually a NASDAQ Stock Exchange tick index as well. We're going to focus on the NYSE tick index or the NYSE ticks. And the reason being is the NYSE tick index has 500 stocks in it. Um, the NASDAQ tick index only has 100 stocks in it. So while you may be trading a NASDAQ stock and you want some perspective of that group, the NYSE uh, tick index, because it has such a wider breadth of, of sectors and market participants, it generally behaves better overall for seeing what's going on underneath the market. So uh, they're just a summary of the number of stocks that are increasing in price versus the number of stocks that are decreasing in price from the previous quote. So one of the things you don't want to do when trying to utilize uh, the tick index is just put it on a watch list uh, like this and, um, and keep an eye on it and look for certain levels. It moves way too fast. Uh, the values change like crazy because it's every tick and there's tons of upticks and downticks in a collection and they're summarized. So it's just really impossible to follow. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have it out there if you'd like, but really what you want to do is you want to have it in chart format. So before we go look at some charts, let's uh, talk about the best way to utilize these. I think you should use alerts, use an audio alert or a visual alert. And the levels that you want to put in these alerts and make them repeatable, just not one touch at this level. If you're not familiar with the tick, it's going to swing back and forth through these levels multiple times during the day. So you need an audio alert for zero, plus 800, minus 800, plus 1,000, and minus 1,000. So this is from uh, John Carter's Mastering the Trade, and I took some tips from him. He actually uses the ticks in intraday trading. Um, he says that anything under plus 400 and anything above minus 400 is just noise. Uh, negative 800 uh, and greater readings are where you're really going to take some action. So minus 800 readings um, would be there's just uh, a lot of selling pressure, and there's a hint that um, that that would be a time to close out any intraday longs if you haven't been stopped out. Likewise for shorts, if you get a plus 800 reading, um, that'd be a hint to close out shorts if you haven't been stopped out. I'm going to jump to charts in just one second so you get a more visual uh, perspective of this. So one more thing to consider is on extreme days with repeated touches of plus or minus a thousand, you can use the rallies or the pullbacks to the middle line to get short or long, and this will help you stay with the trend of the day. So with that, let's take a look at some charts, and I'll show you what these look like. All right, so let's take a look at May 8th. Um, this is the spot on the right-hand side, and this is the NYSE tick index uh, on the left-hand side. Um, this is a day where we gapped up, and we went up. So there's a decent gap, and we ended up closing a little bit higher. So how would you trade this? How would you have stuck with it throughout the whole day? And how could you use the tick index to help you do that? So let's focus on the tick for a minute. These uh, kind of thick white lines, these are the minus 800 level, the almost zero level, the center line, and then the plus 800 level. So let's say we give the, the first half hour, uh, we don't give it too much credit, but as you can see, even in the first half hour with this tick index, there's nothing even below the center line. If you're looking at 10 o'clock and approaching 10 o'clock, there's nothing even uh, barely below zero until we get here, which is 1024. So everything is 800 or such plus. And that makes sense. We were gapped up, uh, so prices are elevated and that kind of thing. But just keep it in mind. So as we go out through, throughout the day, by the time we hit 11 o'clock, there is no minus 800 reading at all. None at all. So there's nothing there that says, hey, if you're long, close out your long, right? One of John Carter's things was, hey, if I'm long and I'm not stopped out and I get a minus 800, I'm going to close out a long. So there's nothing that says close out longs. So if you were kind of going with the trend and we were gapped up and stocks were strong, you would stay long. 
by 11 o'clock you've got more readings of 800 again nothing below look at all the color and uh, these are red and white candles sorry about that but all this uh, all the drawings are pretty much the majority are above the zero line this is the center line so all the action is up here there's really nothing that says hey you should sell out so um, this down move here you can see it uh, right before 11 o'clock maybe you would have gotten sh shaken out of your longs if you had a trend line in your trading spies or something like that but there's really nothing that says hey get out if you arranged yourself somewhere after um, 10 a.m. you'd be here and if you had a, a, a stop loss that was near you probably weren't shaken out but you know going into lunchtime and the rest of the day how do you you know set yourself up psychologically to stay with it it really is there's just no negative extreme readings you're getting multiple touches up here 800 800 the bulk of the action is above the zero line it's really just it just stay with it for the rest of the day I can see this action here this would have been challenging at 2 p.m. and it breaks the trend line there no problem go ahead take out take some profits you get shaken out and like we said um, use an opportunity in a strong day that if things start retracing back to the zero line to get long so you get out you watch things for a little while and again nothing below this middle line at all this is zero and above maybe you take one of these pullbacks and you get long again here say at 239 so here's uh, 230 this is where you would get long if you get long at 239 you buy that pullback almost perfectly um, and you'd be here and again all the action is above the zero line for the rest of the day you could stick with that to the close and just write it out so I know it's easier to look at this in hindsight and say oh do this do that but you can kind of see what I'm coming at from it gives you conviction to stay with your trades and know that you're on the right side of the trend this is a wide breadth of the market indicator what's going on with a lot of stocks let's take a look at a different day a more challenging day alright so let's look at another chart this is May 13th this is actually today um, and this was a day that was challenging we um, we, we traded much lower if you look at the spies on this side yesterday on 512 we traded off uh, after 3 p.m. pretty hard and then today with uh, some uh, conversations with uh, Jerome Powell and the Fed and that kind of thing and he was talking about the economy it wasn't very positive um, they're also talking about they weren't considering negative interest rates but more of the story how would you stay with say this uh, this move down here um, and catch the bulk of this down move so let's take a look at the tick so again up till 10 o'clock we're not gonna really give it too much credence but with this chart you can see this is the center line here so this is the zero line here's positive 800 here's negative 800 so looking coming into this at 10 o'clock and just kind of eyeballing it where is all the color where is all the action I know you get these peaks but the action is all in here it's below zero so um, if you're short and you have a pinch, pension to be short um, you want to stick with it as best as possible obviously um, if you were coming into the trade it would be tough to hold this but if you were looking to get position somewhere in here um, this is uh, 955 we get a move up at 10 1003 and I think that's probably this spike no it's not actually 10 1003 is here so the tick is not screaming it's not amazingly positive and the spies do this strange move uh, up um, this is a great opportunity to get short you've got all this action here it's a move to the zero line um, you put in a short and you catch this and then at 1026 this is probably this move here so yeah you would have either if you didn't take profits you would have gotten stopped out here but then what okay so you sit on the sidelines for a little while and you keep an eye on it and as we go into 11 11 30 and you're still trying to figure out hey what's this day gonna do look at all this is where the action is it's not up here it's all below the center line this is where all the color is so you could probably re reposition yourself confidently um, somewhere in here after 11 o'clock so 11 o'clock you just see this just all this color so at 11 o'clock um, you have this big down move you start thinking about getting short and maybe um, take the next uh, retracement back up here so one two three four five minutes or so 1109 maybe you take one of these spikes and you get short and that would be somewhere in here you don't have to take much of a pullback um, and then we start to head lower and with that for the rest of the day uh, there are a couple touches at positive 800 later but that's at 1 p.m. 
right? Up here, there's nothing that says, hey, get out of your shorts. That's what a positive 800 would tell you, and all the action is down here. So you could have gotten short at 11 and stayed with it uh, till right before, say, 102. I'm looking at these center line candles here before it spikes up here. This happens at 113. So you could take an 11 to 1 short. Um, you'd sit through a pullback and stuff. But that's a big chunk of the day right there. After that, it gets, it gets a little bit messier. You do get uh, some of these touches. So let's say get out of your shorts. But all in all, if you look again, visualize this is this is the center line and this is the negative. You can see how much the majority of the day going into 1 p.m. is all in here. So there's really no reason not to be short. And at least throughout this part is stick, stick with it from uh, 11 on because these are 400 readings and these are negative 1,000, negative 1,200. When you see that, that's just immense selling pressure and you should just be short. So there were two days. Um, again, add it to your toolbox. Don't take my word for it. Um, take a look at it. Make sure you have a graphical representation. Use alerts. Don't drive yourself crazy. Just so you know, hey, we're hitting 1,000. We're minus 1,000 again. We're minus 1,000 again. When you start hearing that multiple times, you should be short, like down here. There were just multiple times from 11 to 12 saying, sit, you know, negative 1,000, be short. And that was all this move here. So I hope that's something that uh, can be useful to you and it'll help you stick with kind of these long trending days. With that, I'm going to wrap it up and keep this one short. As always, uh, if you like this video, please smash the like button, uh, subscribe, support me. I'll kick out more videos of things I'm using to trade the markets. And as always, protect your profits, protect your profits, play good defense. And with that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you.